The BYU Cougars are headed to Waco, Texas this Saturday for a showdown against the Baylor Bears. They have a twofold mission, A, to make some history, and B, to correct a misguided narrative about the program. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first view and or listen of the day. And obviously a big thank you to all of you who we like to call everydayers right here on your original daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started and take advantage of that offer today. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. BYU football gearing up for what I expect will be a very physical showdown against the Baylor Bears in Waco on Saturday. It's going to be an early kickoff for BYU, and there's been a narrative out there about this BYU football team that they, quote-unquote, can't win during the day. Now, the history suggests that that is the truth. Uh, Greg Rubel uh, put it out, I think it was actually on like Sunday after BYU beat Kansas State. He said in BYU's last 14 uh, road games during the day, or no, 14 games overall during the day, excuse me, last 14 day games, BYU's record is 2-12. and 12. In fact, it almost gets worse in a way when you consider, as I understand it, BYU's lost their 10 straight day games uh, when it comes to facing off against the likes of Baylor during daylight hours. Now, obviously, we want to see BYU get to 5-0. and That's good for business. It's good for fan morale. It's good for the team and their psyche. It's good for all parties involved. But is it a bit misguided on this? I saw a tweet, and it just popped up uh, randomly, and it was a tweet in response to one from our good friend Cougar Stats. Uh, and Cougar Stats said this, BYU's day and night records is a classic textbook example of demonstrating that correlation is not causation. Then Logue One, a play on, obviously, Rogue One from the Star Wars uh, catalog, said this. It's Logan M9384. So, Logan, thank you for this. Says that I looked into this with my friend today. He says, okay, so BYU's lost its last 10 day games. He says only two of those games were home games. Six of them rode, two of them neutral. Of those 10 teams, six of them finished ranked in the top 25. Only one of those teams finished below 500. That's TCU last year when BYU got absolutely obliterated by the Horn Frogs 44 to 11. So the average end of season record for those 10 teams, 8.9 against 4.2. So roughly at nine and four, give or take a few uh, percentage points. In other words, it's correlation, but not causation. Okay, that's fair. But it doesn't help BYU that they've played during the day against good teams and still lost. BYU is going to Baylor this week, and he mentions that one of those teams finished below 500, TCU. That's not ideal for BYU. They're going to have to obviously face off against a Baylor squad that it's got its back against the wall. They're 2-2 two and two coming off a heartbreaking loss against Colorado. And oh, by the way, as I mentioned in today's uh, show open, BYU is looking to make some history for their program. As it stands, BYU's never won a road Big 12 game. Remember, last year, BYU went winless on the road in Big 12 play. In fact, they went 2-7 and seven in Big 12 play overall. BYU currently 1-0, but the only game so far in the Big 12 is a home game against Kansas State. So that, as I mentioned, BYU A has a chance to make history on Saturday when they take on Baylor down there in Waco. Obviously, there'll be a little bit of payback on their mind. I know that 2021 got more of the payback in 2022 when BYU got the upset win in Provo late night, obviously at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. But still, the last time BYU played in Waco, they got absolutely pummeled. And funny enough, Gary Bohannon was the starting quarterback and carved BYU up in that game. And he'll be on BYU sideline when they make that return to McLean Stadium. Second thing is, yes, there is a perception out there that BYU can't win during the day. But it, as they, as these two individuals point out, both Cougar Sats and our good friend uh, Logue One, the bigger issue is it's a causation, excuse me, correlation is not causation. BYU, when they have played during the day of recent memory, in recent memory, I should say, they have played better teams. Remember, a lot of the teams BYU's played late at night are games that aren't necessarily marquee matchups. Remember last year, BYU played against Oklahoma. You think Oklahoma in late November is going to play against BYU at 8.15 at night in Provo, Utah? Probably not. And I had it on pretty good authority leading up to that game that essentially 
Oklahoma told TV broadcast partners that if you do that, we're going to be upset for lack of a better term. You know what? Big dogs throw their weight around and end up being a 10 a.m. kickoff for BYU against the Oklahoma Sooners. And as many people will point out inside the BYU football program, including Jay Hill, who said it into a microphone and on camera during the coordinator's corner show earlier this week, BYU competed very, very well against Oklahoma. And a few plays go their way. They very likely would have won that contest. So is it a chance for BYU to excise some of those quote unquote demons when it comes BYU can't win during the day? Yeah, they have that opportunity to prove that against Baylor this week, and I hope they do. But let's also not misunderstand that a lot of these day games have featured higher level opposition for BYU than most. I'm not trying to make an excuse to be very clear about this. I'm just pointing out that there are two opportunities for BYU against Baylor that may have been overlooked. A, opportunity to win your first ever Big 12 road game. That would be a momentous occasion. Probably gets lost to the annals of history in due time, but it's still some history that could be made in Waco. And then second thing is, yeah, you could correct or change the narrative that BYU can't were in during the daylight hours. It's got to be after sundown if the Cougars want to win. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we're going to talk with a guy who I would imagine has a similar sentiment to me. In fact, I know he does because I asked him that very question and he weighed in on it. Gennaro Guilford is one of my favorite guys to talk to inside the BYU football program. A gregarious personality, a phenomenal position coach. He's got guys kind of moving in and out of his lineup on a constant basis when it comes to BYU's cornerbacks. How is he managing all that? And what does he expect as BYU gets ready to head to Baylor? We'll catch up with Coach G, as most people call him, next, right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Roy. It's time to highlight my Roy Player of the Week. Roy is a new platform that lets fans make contributions directly to your favorite athletes. Download Roy for iOS or Android and enter the referral code Locked On. It'll be enter- automatically entered to win a sweepstakes to win five thousand dollars in straight cash. No purchase necessary and avoid where prohibited. But this week we have selected Harrison Taggart as our uh, Player of the Week for Roy for BYU. The reason why. Well, he matched his career high for tackles, had a major interception. Remember the second interception of Avery Johnson at Kansas State that helped BYU essentially put that game to bed. He was well uh, well deserving of that award, obviously because of the defensive output BYU had. I felt like he was deserving of it because he's been a stud all season long so far. So I am giving Harrison $100 on Roy. If you're impressed with his performance like I was on Saturday, you can show him some love too. Just hop on Roy and throw in a few bucks. Very pitches in just 10 bucks. It has been real fast for Mr. Taggart. Now you have the chance to show your appreciation for Harrison in a standout performance this week, as well as what he'll continue to bring your program with our friends over at Roy. So get off the sidelines and into the NIL game and do it with our friends over at Roy. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn is here for you guys. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find those quality professionals that are perfect and right for your role. That's why you guys need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has a tool to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and more importantly, do it for free. LinkedIn is not just another job board. LinkedIn helps you find professionals you won't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively looking for a new position but might be open to the right fit. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking simply in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional and do it with our friends on LinkedIn. Enjoy more than 2.5 million small businesses who are using LinkedIn for their hiring needs. Post your job for free right now at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post that job for free. Of course. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first view or listen of the day. If you have not done so already, check out our friends over the Locked On College Football Podcast. Spencer McLaughlin is doing an incredible job covering everything top to bottom when it comes to the bigger college football universe. Obviously, a lot of moves in the Pac-12. He's got it covered top to bottom for you guys. Check it out. It's Locked On College Football. Uh, wherever you get your podcasts, it's available. It's also available on YouTube. And, of course, proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. As I mentioned, I had a great opportunity to talk with Gennaro Guilford yesterday following BYU football practice. He, Like I said, he's one of my favorite guys to talk to because he keeps it real. But at the same time, he is a bona fide uh, stud as a coach. 
he has dealt with numerous injuries to his cornerback position uh, room this season already. Some of them obviously out front. Evan Johnson left against Kansas State, and it appears he's going to miss some time. Well, get, good news is when Evan Johnson gets lost, Maury Bamba just returned from his own injury after getting injured late in training camp and missing out on the first three weeks of the season. So it's been a bit of a shuffling of the board, as it were, for Gennaro Guilford, but he is not making any complaints. He expects his guys to perform every single week, obviously. And more importantly, he's got some unique insights as to the mindset of the BYU defense, what's made them so good. And in fact, a little bit of a tidbit of a guy on BYU staff who predicted Parker Kingston's punt return for a touchdown against Kansas State. All that and more right now with Gennaro Guilford right here on the Locked On Cougars podcast. You've had a bit of a rotating cast of characters at cornerback. We saw Evan Johnson leave the game the other night, but we saw Maury Bamba come back. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to balance all this and keep these guys up to speed? Um, you know what? Having having uh, depth, depth helps, and mm -hmm. having um, all those guys playing spring and be here through spring and take all those reps uh, definitely definitely pay, pay, paid off. And uh, it just so happens that uh, Maury went down uh, in fall camp, yeah. so it allowed Evan to get about four weeks of reps. Yeah. Um, so... Um, when his time came, he was he was uh, ready, and it just so happened that his his week coming back, um, unfortunate. Yeah. But you know, Evan Evan had went down, and mm -hmm. um, Moore was there to to, to step up. So um, it just kind of kind of played out that way. Now I t I remember talking to you during training camp about Moore and kind of his ascension up the depth chart. Has he taken any time to get caught up, caught back up because of the time he missed since then? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's been watching all the film, trying to get ready, uh, doing all the small things as far as um, technique and, and stuff like that. And um, um, it's been it's been a benefit, you know, having all the all the coaches here and having um, uh, Rob Daniels, yeah. who's my GA here now. Your you know. assistant. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. So he's he's been um, good to have because yeah. he can take more to the side and kind of work work with him while he's kind of going through things and stuff like that. So he's done a great job doing that. Um, just getting guys ready and uh, prepared. Yeah. Now, obviously, you've had Jacob out there, and he's been, uh, frankly, a stud from my perspective, both co playing outside corner, also that nickel spot. Mm -hmm. What makes him so versatile and being able to just try and move between those two spots when yeah. needed? Um, you know, it just is IQ for the game. It's IQ for the game. Um, um, pays pays attention to details. Um, Ability to be sticky in coverage, not afraid to come up and tackle, so we're so we can afford to move him inside, inside and outside. And knock on wood, he's been able to stay uh, healthy, so um, he's definitely a, a, a pleasure to work with. Your cornerbacks obviously have a very tough job in this league. So there's some of the bigger wide receivers. I know, like this week, example for Bailey, they got some pretty big-bodied receivers. Mm -hmm. What do you teach them to combat that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, we we don't want to engage with the big boys. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's it's, it's going to be. Um, you got to be smart, you know, you got to win with your feet, being uh, positioned to make plays. And um, for us, we'll just use our feet. And um, when, the, when the play presents itself, we just got to be there to make a play. Well, Chase Roberts just walked by, and he's a bigger body receiver. Oh, yeah, is, sure. is, is that nice to have guys like him to go up against in practice? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, Chase, Darius, yeah. um, you know, all those, Keelan, all those big yeah. boys, Keelan. Um, <laughs> Well, even Marquise, Keanu, I'm sure, Keanu. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so we got some big boys that we've that we've faced for the last few years. Uh -huh. um, so when we face bigger guys, it's not like it's brand new because we have um, a big receiving core. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, we got to work winning with our feet every single day with our with our offense. You know, because again, they are big. They do have ball skills, high point the ball, and all that good stuff. And um, that's why those guys are making plays now. Does it help a guy like Trey Alexander to literally be 6'2 when he has to go up against guys of his caliber? I know he's a young player, yeah, yeah. but his length, is you can't teach that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, anytime you can get a guy that's, a guy who's 6'2 who has long arms and, and um, pretty good feet and a guy that can run, it always helps out a little bit because it just shrinks the windows down, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely a privilege having, having a guy like that. Have him and Jonathan Cabea surprised you with their ability to get on the field so early on? Um, you know what? No. Um, Jay Hill did a great job of um, of evaluating those guys, and Jay Jay knows uh, what he wants. You know, um, I can show Jay 15 guys, and he's like, no, no to 14, and yes to one, and okay. um, he's usually right. You know what I mean? So 
when he seen those two, he was he was definitely all in. Um, didn't have to second guess himself and stuff like that. So um, we kind of knew that that those two guys would come in, uh, be uh, prepared to play, yeah. um, be be prepared for school, and just be ready to be around this team. How collaborative of a process is it with Jake? Because I know he's a former all-conference yeah, sure. corner yeah, yeah, himself, yeah. and you yeah. obviously have your accolades yourself. How collaborative an effort is it between you two as you evaluate talent? Oh, I mean, it's, it's a it's, it's, it's total, like, double duty. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, he'll watch them, I'll watch them. We'll both send each other guys, um, evaluate them, compare them to guys and stuff like that. Because um, at the end of the day, we want to be good, and we always want the best guys. So, you know, we, we go from the film, go to meet them, go to meet the parents, yeah. go to see what kind of uh, – personality they have uh, all that all that good stuff so um, it's, 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 it's a total uh, collaboration are, are there times you'll be like hey this is a safety guy and he'll send you a corner guy essentially and be like, oh for hey, sure that's oh yeah yeah and, 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 and Jay recruits everything okay so it, it could be a D tackle I mean he has an eye just, yes. just he's just a ball coach you know what I mean knows what he's looking um, for oh for sure for sure and he knows he knows what it takes to be in this defense and be successful mm-hmm. um, and that's the and that's the great thing because he because he'll he'll flat out say like I, I'm not sure if this guy's competitive enough or whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. um, he might not be styled enough or he's not twitchy enough whatever the case may be you know what I'm saying but um, Jay does a, a great job at that. What has made this defense so good through four games this season from your perspective? Um, the family atmosphere, t- to be honest with you, man. Mm-hmm. I, our defense, they they definitely come together. They all they all get along. They all hold each other accountable. So um, it's the difference between a coach holding holding the player accountable, um, but peer to peer is always different. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, Jay has been preaching that from from day one, and I think they're finally starting to get it. Um, hold each other accountable, whether it's a front guy or a back guy. Like you'll hear a, a D tackle telling the corner as far as the, if you're in the zone and you're midpoint the route or vice versa. They're supposed to be in the gap or whatever the case may be. So they definitely hold each other accountable, which is um, a great thing. So um, kudos to all the defensive staff for um, making that happen. You were on the staff when you guys went to Baylor last time. What, what are your memories of playing down there at McLean Stadium? Uh, man, getting our butts kicked, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, you know, I mean, um, great, great atmosphere. Yeah. Um, they had a, a great team. Gary, Gary yeah. was, their, was their QB, man. Mm-hmm. Um, but they always gonna play tough, tough defense with you know coach, coach Aranda there. So yeah. um, that's n- never gonna be a question. Um, but this year the, the offense is good, a great running game. They have over four backs with with twenty carries. Mm-hmm. They have big like like you mentioned earlier. They got big wideouts who can go and high point and use their body to uh, to fend you off and catch mm-hmm. the ball and curls and. Um, fade balls. They have two little slot wideouts that can really, really go mm-hmm. shifty, fast. I think one is like a ten five hundred. The other one is shifty. He might be close to that as well. So um, definitely have our have our uh, hands full. It's, it's, it's going to be warm. So um, good, good that it's warm now. That's why I got on the, the got a, a black, a black sweater. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, it's not going. It's not going to be um, close to there, close yeah. to Texas. But you know, getting ready for it. Last thing for me, are you helping Tyler Batty catch interceptions? Like working on those ball skills? Because that was pretty nice to see him yeah. come down with hey, that. Hey, you know what? We do we do drills with the D linemen too. Oh, you do? Okay. We, we do, we do. <laughs> I mean, it's a, again, and that's the the great thing about this team. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, we'll do turnover drills with the D linemen. Yeah. Our, our, our D line coach, uh, Coach Coach Puha, Coach Coach K Pop, Coach Anna, they'll do drills with the corners and everything mm-hmm. like that. So we all, we all, <laughs> collaborate and help everybody so again that's the that's the 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 great thing and that's why our, our guys are so accountable as far as being peer-to-peer because they um they see us all as far as having hands-on so that's a good thing i meant to ask this i, I said last thing but one more thing yeah have you ever seen a punt safe situation go back for a touchdown like it did for parker <laughs> you know what um i i personally haven't um but the funny part is this: we actually met about that um, on on Thursday. Okay. On Thursday, and uh, Coach Jay said the best punt returns should be defensive state because that's our guys out there. It's our defensive guys out there, and we know what we're doing. And we're gonna return it to our sideline every time, and it should be the the best return. So, of course, as soon as it got returned, we hop on the headset like. 
okay, Jay, I see you. Like, you know, you you actually caught it. Like, yeah. like literally on, on, on Thursday, he met with the whole defense and, and told him that. So um, it was just a, a great thing that happened. Jay Hill is Nostradamus. We no, got it. Absolutely. So Jay Hill is Nostradamus. That's what we're pulling away from this interview, aren't we? Now, there's other good things in there. Gennaro talked about what Jacob Robinson's meant to this defense. Overall, what he's seeing from BYU's defense, and they said the family nature of it, guys holding each other accountable, but at the same time, getting along and doing their 111th. This is a BYU defense that's playing at an elite level right now, and it really is reflected in the way that they operate as a unit. And obviously, it was good to hear from Gennaro and allow him to explain exactly how it's all gone down, but it's incredible to consider that Jay Hill in a meeting last Thursday essentially called it that that uh, BYU is going to return a punt for a touchdown. Uh, and Parker Kingston did just that. Jay Hill is an incredible coach, but apparently has a preternatural ability to predict the future. So I'm calling Jay Hill from now on. Nostradamus. All right. Once again, a big thank you to Gennaro Guilford for taking the time to join us here on the podcast. And we'll have more conversations like this, obviously, uh, throughout the coming days and weeks on the podcast. So stay tuned for all of those. All right. We're going to finish up today's show. Uh, coming up next, we're going to talk a little BYU basketball. Training camp is officially underway for Kevin Young as he gets ready for his first season at the helm of the BYU men's basketball program. What all is it going to entail? Well, we'll delve into that coming up in just a minute right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Of course, NFL fans, you all can ha have a great start to your season with a big return with our friends at FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book. Obviously, it's not just NFL. If you're a college football junkie, you're getting ready for the NHL season with Utah Hockey Club. If you live here in Utah, uh, just getting underway. Uh, NBA, anything. Uh, Major League Baseball postseason upcoming. It's all available to you guys from our friends over at FanDuel, so you can bet to your heart's content. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you will place those bets as well and hopefully get major returns. Right now, you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. All you do is place a $5 bet, get $200 bucks back in guaranteed uh, bonus uh, bets from our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel.com is where you get started today. It's all courtesy of your friends over at FanDuel. Once again, America's number one sports book. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first viewer listen of the day. Of course, a big thank you to all of you for who have joined our Locked On Cougars Insider Group. If you guys have not done so already, I'm sharing insider tidbits, what I'm observing at BYU football practices, what I'm hearing about the Cougars. Uh, we're having one on one chats via text message in game and just in everyday life. If you'd like to have that access, click the link in the show notes below. It's a hyperlink. It's whether you're listening or watching this. It's a 14 day free trial, just $5 a month afterwards. Get the inside scoop on all things BYU as a member of the Locked On Cougars Insider Group. All right, BYU basketball. gonna uh, They officially got underway with their 30 practice training camp, for lack of a better term. Now, they have 40-plus days in the lead-up to the start of the season, but you're allowed to have 30 practices. Now, they're supposed to obviously have some breaks in there that's just built in to the schedule. BYU also have a Midnight Madness event that's coming up. Uh, you guys should call it Cougar Madness. It's not Midnight Madness anymore. That's coming up uh, next week on October 3rd. Uh, BYU's annual Blue and White game is extremely early this year, October 9th. So get ready, folks. We're going to be watching uh, the this version of BYU basketball in very quick fashion. But the more important thing is Kevin Young is now formally getting ready for his first ever foray uh, into coaching this BYU basketball team. He has made a major, major impact on BYU. NIL is obviously a topic du jour. BYU recruiting an extremely high level since he arrived on campus, bringing in guys like Yeor Demin, as well as Cannon Catchings, Elijah Crawford, just on down the line. Just think about the guys BYU has landed. Brody Kozlowski, in most uh, off-seasons for BYU basketball, would have been like the talisman of the recruiting class. And seemingly, he's just another guy. And he's an incredible talent. He's a four-star talent in his own right. They have brought in a ton of talent to this roster. They've also added transfers like Kaba Keita to the mix. So I think Kaba figures to be BYU starting five man in this uh, lineup. But I really am excited to see what this BYU basketball team ends up morphing into. Is it going to be a positionless basketball team? I think that in his heart of hearts, that's what Kevin Young aspires for this squad to be. Now, that's much easier said than done because certain guys' skill sets lend themselves to be being better, maybe playing on the front court, on the wing, having the ball in the hand, having the ball in their hands, playing off the ball. 
everybody is different, but the goal for Kevin Young and his staff is to find the right roles for all these players, get them on the same page, and then let them go out there and allow their natural talent to take over. This is one of, if not the most talented top to bottom rosters BYU basketball has ever assembled. I, I'm dead serious. In over a hundred years of BYU basketball, you'd be hard pressed to find a better collection of talent on paper than this team. Now, once again, Kevin Young and his staff, and he's assembled an all-star staff, I think, are going to have the task of going out there, A, identifying which guys are going to fit what roles best, B, narrow it down to, man, if it goes more than a 10-man rotation, I will be absolutely floored. And that's going to leave, I think, some talented guys having to be bench guys and having to play the good teammate where they're relegated to sitting there and uh, cheering their teammates on while not seeing the court very often. I don't think that rotation really gets narrowed down truly until BYU gets into conference play. And obviously the big 12 is just a, a major, major bear trap out there. 20 games in the big 12 this year. And I saw a projection just the other day, that BYU's 10th of the 16 teams in the big 12. And funny enough that that 10th spot might get them a five or a six seed. If they, it is incredible to consider the caliber, the talent, the depth overall of the Big 12 Conference. But BYU's got 40, let's say 40 days, just round number. They've got 40 days from now to get it right, and obviously then they, they're off and rolling with the regular season. Now you get a, a handful, it's probably, I think it's 13 non-conference games to get yourselves tuned up for conference play. And it's going to be important, I think, in those 13 games for Kevin Young to iron out wrinkles. There's inevitably going to be stuff about this BYU roster, no matter how talented it is, that is going to have to iron itself out. There may be an issue of a log jam at one position where you're like, hey, I've got three or four guys here. I all think need to hit the court and be on the court together. Can you play them in different formats? Can you change the lineup? Can you stratify them in terms of minutes with rotation uh, to get them on the court and have them have success? Or is it going to be the situation where you have a lack of shooting with one lineup and you're trying to balance that with a lineup that may be more defensive oriented and kind of your stopper group. There are so many of these things that are going to be discovered in the coming days, weeks, and months ahead for this BYU basketball team. But Kevin Young, he's got the reputation of being a guy who can figure it out. There's a reason why he was so highly and widely respected in basketball circles when it came to the NBA. His background is an, as a primarily an offensive coach, but he relates with players on a deeper level. That's why guys like Devin Booker, Chris Paul, I think Joel Embiid has been mentioned, all just talk about this guy with glowing reviews. He is a guy who connects with his players, and I think that connection, especially at the collegiate level, could go a really, really long way to helping BYU break through in even this first year under Kevin Young. These are young men, many of them 18 years old, who have never been away from home for long stretches of time. Obviously, there's some veteran players on this unit, guys like Trevin Nell, who are, I think Trevin might be 24 or 25 at this point. But then you have the also the dichotomy of a guy like Elijah Crawford, Brody Kozlowski, who are 18 years old. So there's a really, really interesting mix of ages, guys from overseas, guys from Utah, guys from elsewhere in the United States. And the amalgamation of all of that has to come together and work. If it doesn't work, well, guess what? BYU is going to find themselves in a world of hurt. Sorry to use the alliteration and rhyme there. I didn't mean to. But Kevin Young's job, it's straightforward. You've got to go out there and win. This is not a team with all the momentum this program has built over this offseason that can afford to fall flat on its face this season. If it does it, it will be considered to be one of the laughing stocks of the league. And I don't have a problem saying that because think about it. There's a lot of people out there, national writers who are very much in the know, who say that BYU is the odds-on favor right now to land A.J. DeBonsa in next year's recruiting cycle. He is considered to be a generational talent, a true one-and-done guy who's going to go to the NBA and is supposed to be a franchise icon for whoever drafts him in the NBA. To get him on BYU campus to be a member of the BYU basketball program would be absolutely remarkable. But he's not just going to do it out of the goodness of his heart. He is looking for a program where he can thrive, he can star, and he can show off exactly what he is as a player. And that's, fingers crossed, where BYU's at. But what do you have to do to do to land him in the end? You got to win. You got to prove you can have a program that's going to set him up for success. If Cannon Catching, Jager Demon, whoever it is on this BYU roster ends up realizing their potential and can jump to the NBA, that's only going to embolden a guy like A.J. DeBonsa to buck a lot of the national trends and pick little BYU. But you got to go out and prove it on the court. And 
We're just underway on what will be a months long journey with KYU. And I'm looking forward to it. All right. That is going to do it for today's edition of the podcast. A big thank you as always for your guys' support. Uh, tomorrow on the show, we're going to catch up with Cam Stewart, the host of Locked On Baylor. Crossover editions, we talk about the matchup between the Bears and the uh, Cougars, uh, the Baptists versus the Mormons, however you want to term it. Looking forward to catching up with him. And always a good time to chop it up with one of my fellow Locked On hosts. So we'll have that for you guys on tomorrow's podcast. But as always, thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first view or listen of the day. And obviously a big thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on Locked On Cougars.